Welcome to the Jamoti Podcast. We are all surrounded by amazing coaches and leaders. So let's get an inside look at not just what they do, but how they do what they do. After all, becoming the best versions of ourselves is Jamoti, just a matter of doing it. Coaches, the Jamoti Podcast is sponsored by 3 on 3 Hoops Hub. 3 on 3 Hoops Hub has run over 350 3 on 3 basketball leagues for kids since 1997. 3 on 3 is the ideal format for players to get a lot of opportunities, work on all skills and positions, and have fun with their friends. Whether you want to build your program, raise some funds, or start your own business, you can bring 3 on 3 to your community and do it like an expert by learning from the best with 3 on 3 Hoops Hub's free 90-minute training. You can register at the link in the show notes. I don't know if you realize this, but you, you taught me a really valuable lesson last summer going into your 31st year of coaching and you came to faith to talk hoops with me. One, I, 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 I know, you know, who I am and where I'm at and, and haven't really accomplished much yet in the, in the world of coaching. So I'm humbled that you would do that. Uh, but the fact that you still have that growth mindset to seek out other coaches and go talk hoops, go to practices, do things like that. Like the, listen to all of the all of this podcast. Like that's really impressive. So in your journey to to continue to learn, what are some of the best things that you borrowed? Uh, even though some <laughs> some coaches call it stealing, I had one coach on here say, "Never call it stealing. It's always borrowing." So uh, what what have you borrowed lately that that you like? I read an article one time. I want to say Popovich said that. Instead of these, he just calls he calls that being a copycat. So we're just copycat yeah. information. But you ask that question, and there is so many things. I mean, I I can't I can't tell you one specific, and that's did you say things or things? Yeah, just whatever you feel like. Like <laughs> le- recently, this is something that I've really I, I've heard that I've liked or that I'm I'm working on or I'm I'm working through. I mean, I, I could probably go a whole podcast with what I've learned within the last four, five, six years. I mean, I, I've changed my way of coaching, not just X and O's, but off the court as well. Hmm. I'm not perfect yet. I still got some old school in me, and I'll I'll get on them sometimes. But and but the playing part of it, I'm totally sold. I'm I the analytics. I drank the grape Kool Aid several <laughs> years ago, and I'm all in. And and that's my personality. It is a if I commit to something, it is hundred percent. I'm not gonna mess around and you know be fluffy with it. Mm-hmm. I think one of the best things, and here's another here's another neat thing with with us with with our staff is we have two. Well, one for sure. Zach Chu played for me, graduated in 2011. He's currently assistant coach for the Pacers, and he comes and shares with me shares with me concepts. He coaches our guys in the summer and in the spring. Wow. In fact, he's been working with our guys this week, putting in some sets. And which I don't know about you, but when I was when I was playing, if if I was if our team we were running sets that the Mavs were running, or yeah, in my, case, in my case the talk about buy in right there. And they and now they're watching NBA games and seeing some of the same actions. But he and another former player, Ryan Massett, who works at Gasso now. They they convinced me a couple of years ago. They talked about and we you talked about it on your podcast about shot selection, and I talked to you last summer about it. And you're saying you had a scale from zero to nine, or what, what's your scale? It's really five to nine because if we're dealing with fours, if we're dealing with fours, we're in trouble. Those are fourth grade shots. We're not doing that. <laughs> well, I, I told you last last summer we. We condensed that, and I don't know where Zach got it. I think Zach got it or somebody in the NBA. But we go from zero to five, and it's a shot selection ranking system yeah. where you want fives. Fives are the ones – those are good shots. And for us and for you, for other coaches, you have to define what that is depending on your philosophy and your offense, what you want. But for us, fives are layups. They're tra- transition threes. If we can throw it ahead and shoot a three, we're, we're shooting it. Paint touch, any paint touch, you get it on the dribble. Paint touch three, open three. Fouled, if you get fouled and go to the free throw line, that's that's a five for us. Maybe a shot from a set play. Offensive rebound, you get an offensive rebound, that's a five, even if it was a bad shot. But those are the ones we want. And then I don't do many fours and twos. It's, it's mainly a 
three three would be somewhere in between for us a mid-range is a three yeah and we don't Analytics, have the players right. first of all we don't practice mid-range and secondly we don't have the guys we don't have chris pauls out there that can shoot those type of shots yeah. now some high schools may and some high schools might emphasize it but we don't and so we if it's a mid-range even if you're wide open it's, it's a three, three. Or maybe not quite a layup, maybe a little floater, not a crazy floater, but maybe you're not quite at the rim, you're floating away a little bit. Those are threes. But then your ones are, those are the bad ones. We, everybody knows what a one is, at least coaches do. Yeah. But players learn very quickly that they don't want ones. And then zero is turnovers for us. Hmm. So what that's helped me do, it's, it's taking all the emotion, at least for me. When I, when I watch it, and and I got this from you. I stole that from you this summer, and that might be one of the best nuggets I got all year was celebrate the value of the possession. Excuse me. Celebrate the quality of the possession, not the outcome of the shot. I mean, I love that. So one more time. Celebrate the quality of the possession, not the outcome of the shot. And I have a note card that I have my plays on, out-of-bounds plays, and I wrote that at the top, and and this year for sure took. I didn't stress about it. Yeah, I mean, if we're getting fine, and I told our players that too. There's sometimes we were down, and in the huddle, you you're saying, "Hey guys, we're getting fives. We're just not making them. You can't control that. That's not your Love fault." That. I mean, yeah. I it took a lot of freedom. I think it gives them freedom too because they're not so worried about. And again, process is a huge word. Everybody mm-hmm. talks about the process. Well, to me, the shot selection numbering system, that is process oriented. You're not, mm-hmm. you're not focusing on the results. In fact, when another team, they dribble in and we're contest, high, highly contesting them and they pull up for a mid range shot and they make it. No and most players, worries. most players put their head down and I'm going, yeah, I keep Let's shooting go. those. Love those. <laughs> and I, it, it's given me so much freedom. And, and then now it, it's less personal. So now on the opposite end, if we're taking some threes and one, I don't have to say, hey, that's a bad shot, or Matt, that that's a horrible shot. I, I generalize and say, hey guys, we need we need, we need fives. Yeah, we're, we're having too many ones, or even some threes. We got to get fives. And Travis Snowden, my assistant, we've worked together. Now he's got the defensive numbering system to where our our objective now is to take fives on offense, and we want to give up fives on defense, and it, it's it's I guess reciprocated it's it's opposite yeah. so on defense if a team takes a a contested mid-range that's a five for us so we, we flip win. the numbering yeah. system now there's no zeros but we we've we've figured out how on both ends to take out the the personnel the hey you, that, you, you didn't cut up the baseline or you you allowed the paint it's it's more of a hey we're getting too many ones but we got to get fives and Actually, as you probably know this. I'm a I'm a number stat. I, I love I love that because it's so objective. The stat, and we've been charting him for three years now. We've charted them. I've done this. We've done the the numbering system. And I, I told our guys today this. I said, okay, when we when we shoot fives for the last three years, our point per possession is about one point five. Wow. That's inside out threes that's layups that every time we shoot at five that's about one one and a half points when we shoot threes now you're down to about 0.4 something like 0.5 somewhere around there about a half a point per, mm-hmm. per shot and ones those are about 0.2 or 0.15 and so it's just logical you say, okay which would you rather shoot do you rather shoot where you can have a chance for 1.48 to make a shot 0.5 or 0.2? And they know the answer. It's guys are smart. It's a matter of actually getting it when you're out there. But emphasizing it and talking about it, it's it's been, again, I can't say how much that's helped me as a coach. And I think it's taken pressure off the players too. Because you say, just keep shooting it. You've heard that. And was that a five? Yes. Well, keep shooting it. Even guys that don't normally take them, if, if you're open and it's an inside inside out three, shoot it. So that to me, that's been the biggest thing I've borrowed or or used. But again, two former players 
were the ones that gave it to me and, and, and made me aware of that. And I can't thank them enough because it is, it has helped us. It, it's our own little language. You guys yeah. know when we talk about yeah. threes or ones or zeros, you don't have to say turnovers anymore. You just say zeros. Mm -hmm. We don't want any more zeros or however you want to, to I like say that. it. Yeah, I uh, like that. And then I've also done it to where I'll take on our huddle clips, as we do, we, we make clips. The first number, before I put even what it was, description, I'll put the number, and I, I grade it. I'll, I'll put five, and then even if it's not a layup, or, or if it is a layup, even if they made it, I'll just put a five. So these play, the players know when they watch it that it's already got the value. So I'll take the, the numbers divided by the possessions, and right now when we're about a 3.8, if we can get 3.8 or higher, we're, we're usually we're going to win. But then if we're, if we're around 3.2 or 3.3, that's averaging. That's averaging yeah. your, your, your turnovers as well. So obviously you can't get a five unless you play a perfect game. But mm -hmm. if you're getting close to four, which for us about 3.8, we're going to win. The two outliers – this year, Richardson, we we got, we shot almost a four. We were three point nine eight, but <laughs> yeah, uh, you know Richardson, they they had some they had, they had some players, some pretty good players, and and we were up. There, there's that, we there's up. a nugget there too. There's a <laughs> nugget there too. What about if you play like a really good team? Well, you probably you might lose. Like you might lose. I mean, if they just have so much more talent, and if they're well coached, and if they do like that you just might lose coach there, there's a lot there uh two things one i really appreciate the fact that your assistants feel that they can bring those things those ideas to you and they're not going to get shot down or you're not so set in your ways that you you know I, I think that's that's really important for a lot of coaches to hear that there might be some of these younger guys that do that are learning things that are new and not cutting it. Shot selection isn't, shot selection isn't cutting edge, but uh, I, I was not aware of a scale at all until I went to PGC. Mm -hmm. You know, that's where I learned mine. I agree with you 100%. If I had to choose one thing that has changed me as a coach, besides uh, returning to my faith, that, that, that that's probably the number one. The second mm -hmm. thing is a shot selection scale that brings clarity to my team. Uh, it takes the vagueness of yeah. only take good shots. Those are bad shots. Guys, we're taking, it takes all of that out. And then you said something that's huge. Shot selection is personal. And one of the mm -hmm. ways to cripple a team, a guy's confidence or take his confidence away from him is with through shot selection. And this this scale that you're talking about, mine's a little bit different, but it accomplishes the same mm -hmm. thing. And what I've learned from you today, which I told you at the beginning, there's hey, always at least one nugget. Thing. All right. <laughs> the turnovers being a part of it. Uh that 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 to me is huge because I get angry at turnovers um more than I get mad at what we would call sixes, contested mm -hmm. jumpers. I get more mad at I should, and after games, we should include that in in our overall offensive performance through shot selection. I, I mm -hmm. coach, because Bobby Knight said it: a bad shot is better than a turnover. So I would take I, if you and I were talking, would you rather a turnover or a bad shot? Give me what we would call a five, a 50-50 shot any day over that turnover, because we still have a chance. Coach, that was a, a great chance, nugget. You have a chance to make it and a chance to get an offensive rebound. Yeah. Yeah, that that that's a huge nugget. But anytime you watch a a talented or a highly efficient offensive team, man, I would bet that throughout their daily conversations, there's very little gray area or an opportunity for players to not uh, not know what a good shot is for their team. Because if you get into it, if if game time is when you're having to explain what a good shot is to your team, yeah. you're in a tough place. Yes. And here the, the side benefit that's not even talked about is this year we shot, and I know field goal percentage isn't everything, but we shot 52% as a team this year overall. And that's not considerably higher, but 
if you can shoot 50% as a team, and then that, that's really good. Three point shot, we were 30, almost 39%, 38%. And so you don't even talk about the percentage. Yeah. And you say, hey, if we shoot 80% of our shots are fives, we're, good, we're probably going to win. And you don't worry about, again, you don't worry about whether it goes in or not. If we get enough fives on offense and we get enough fives on defense, it, re, it doesn't matter how much we score or if we mm. score. Now, both of those are clicking, you're going to blow someone out. That's but, right. But again, against Richardson, we had almost four offensively, but <laughs> defense is. Yeah. A little bit different. We, I think we were tied. We were up one at half, which was a miracle. And one or two after three. And then we lost by 17. And mm. It was a onslaught. They were Three good, dunks. though. Dunks. Oh, my gosh. It was, but it was impressive. The freedom, the freedom that you're talking about, majority of teams have at least one or two guys that because they've been designated as the man, they feel freedom and magically they actually they shoot better than the rest that are terrified of missing this freedom that you're talking about i think it it does a few things it opens up your you know maybe 3 4 5 6 7 8 guy on your team it allows them to surprise you at times mm -hmm. and to make some huge shots that the other team is not banking on. Like they know mm -hmm. that Allen's going to maybe score 50, but it's mm -hmm. the other guys that go for six or eight that really mm -hmm. kill you. So it allows that. And then, and, and then it gets, creates more buy-in from your team. Cause when you're talking shot selection, it directly connects to the style of play. And if your style of play is holding players back from being allowed to shoot those good shots that you've determined. Mm -hmm. Why practice? Like, yeah. what's the point of skill work, coach? You you know I'm not getting to do this in games, right? So <laughs> I, I think I think that shot selection scale starts to bleed into all all parts of your your program and style. And it doesn't mean that everybody has a green light all the time. You know, if one guy's not a great three point shooter and he's shot a couple of threes from a five, you know, that, that's one of those that you might say, and I will, hey, maybe you need to start driving, you know, yeah. drive for the basket. And the players know too, the pecking order, we've talked about that. You've talked about it. All the shooting drills we do, all the records we keep, they, they know who should be shooting. And Coach, you, you nailed it. You, you yep. nailed it. If you're going to have a shooting scale, and, and you want everybody to live by it. So in ours, uh, if we get nines, mm -hmm. eights, and sevens, mm -hmm. if those are the three shots that we're shooting, I'm, I'm going to be pleased with that possession. Sevens are the tough one. It's a wide open jump shot. And then there's this little, when we write it out for our players, this little in parentheses within their range, within your range. Mm -hmm. Well, little Timmy thinks that his range is half court when he he's watched Steph Curry <laughs> coach this is this step back from the volleyball line this is my range you have to help them understand not by telling them what their range is by them getting to learn what their range is and by shooting games tracking mm -hmm. constantly yes. having numbers thrown out loud of totally where we're agree. at the pecking order will will come and then yes it, it Role identification is uh, a seamless transition yeah. from these drills and talking like this. Totally agree. We need to do a, I mean, not even a podcast. We need to do, I need to drive out there and we can talk two hours just on shooting. Thank you for checking out today's episode. Please take a moment to subscribe to this podcast, share it with your fellow coaches, and find us on social media for what's coming up next on the Jamodi podcast. It's just a matter of doing it.